purpose of this video is to review uh, various um, problems that students may encounter with fractions and when I say problems I'm really talking about operations such as addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. So let's just go ahead and get started. The first thing I want to point out to you is in this box here where we have items 1 through 8, the first thing I would do is read my directions. Uh, just imagine if you whether this is a quiz or a practice test or something and it, and it simply just says complete write your answer as a mixed number in simplest form. I highly recommend anytime you're working with fractions that you always put your uh, sum or difference product or quotient in simplest forms. And let's go ahead and look at the first one as an example. Now this says one and one sixth plus four and two fourths. Now I do want to point out that while this is an addition problem, they're not all addition problems in this block. You have to be very careful and look at your sign to make sure you don't make a simple error. I notice that this one's addition and addition. And then I have a subtraction problem, another subtraction problem, a subtraction problem, another subtraction problem, addition and addition. So before you approach any problem, make sure that you look at the sign to know which operation you're dealing with. Now the first one says one and one sixth plus four and two fourths. I'm going to go ahead and pretend like this area I have here is my scratch paper. And one of the things I want to point out is just because the problem may be written in a uh, horizontal um, positioning of the numbers or fractions, mixed numbers in this case, uh, you can always uh, make that vertical if you like, however you need to. So just pretend like this area is my scratch paper. And, and very carefully, I'm going to transfer these mixed numbers to here. I have 1 and 1 6, and I'm always making sure that whenever I rewrite a problem, I write it down exactly the way it's given to me so I don't make a simple error. So 1 and 1 6 plus, and here I have 4 and 2 fourths. So 4 and 2 fourths. And just looking at this, I see I have the right problems. Now, when it comes to addition, the method that I would use is I'd go ahead and I would solve uh, first by adding my whole numbers. 1 plus 4 is 5. And then I would approach my fraction part. And you always want to make sure that you have like denominators. And here I have a 6 as a denominator and a 4. Because we don't have like denominators, we're going to have to come up with equivalent fractions that do have like denominators. And I know that the least common multiple of 4 and 6 is 12. And since that's the least common multiple, that's going to be my least common denominator. You always want to start out with the least common denominator because it always makes your uh, simplifying answer, the answer at the end, a lot easier and quicker. And so I'm going to go ahead and put 12 here. I'm going to put 12 here. And I do have equal signs because these fractions I'm creating here are equivalent to the 1 6 and the 2 fourth I have here. Now, whatever I do to my denominator in order to get 12, I must do to my numerator. So 4 times 3 gave me 12, so I must multiply 2 by 3. So 4 times 3 equals 6. And just a quick observation, 2 fourths we know is equal to half. It's equivalent to half because 2 is half of 4. 6 twelfths is half. 6 is half of 12. If you have a dozen donuts, you have 12. You have a half dozen, you have 6. Now let's go over here. We have 6 and we times that by 2 to get 12. So I must multiply this numerator by 2. 1 times 2 equals 2. So now I can go ahead and add my numerators together. You only add the numerators together, the denominators will stay the same. So I'll go ahead and put my 12 here for my denominator because it stays the same regardless. And here I have 2 plus 6 and that will give me 8. Now I'm going to go ahead and simplify my mixed number. 5 is going to remain my mixed number because 8 over 12 is not an improper fraction. I know that the greatest common factor of 8 and 12, the number that will go into both of these, is uh, 4. You always want to simplify by using the greatest common factor. That way you don't have to keep simplifying and simplifying over again until you get it in simplest form. 4 will go into 8 two times. You can pretty much think, you know, 8 divided by 4 equals 2. 12 divided by 4 equals 3. So our uh, answer for 1 and 1 6 plus 4 and 2 fourths is equal to 5 and 2 thirds. Now, 
I went, I really want to point this thing out. Where I put my equal sign, I made sure to write down my whole number again, my five, before I wrote the two thirds. I've had students before who would want to go like eight, five, and eight twelfths is equal to two thirds. Well, five and eight twelfths is definitely not equal to two thirds. It is not. Uh, five and eight twelfths is equal to five and two thirds. So when you simplify mixed numbers, be sure that you bring that whole number over with you. All right, now let's go ahead and look at one of the subtraction problems. But let me clear my board here. And I always like to see the students work. That way, I, if there's an error in their sum or difference or product or quotient, I can look at how they did it and kind of um, back engineer and see what they did wrong to help them um, get better. Now, let's go ahead and uh, look at, uh, let's look at this one here. Four and six ninths take away two thirds. And I always like to write my adding and subtracting fraction problems in a vertical uh, form. When it comes to multiplying and dividing, I like the uh, horizontal, but vertical for this, it just makes it easier to me. The first thing I would do with this uh, problem is I would ask myself if this fraction, if I can recognize that this fraction is larger than this fraction, because if it is larger, then I can go ahead and just say 4 take away nothing is 4 and write that down. But if it's not, I may take one of my holes and uh, convert it into uh, 9 over 9 and add it to my 6 over 9 and then, or whatever. You know, it's just good to know. Now, eyeballing this, I know that, generally speaking, 6 ninths is equivalent to 2 thirds. It's just something I know just by looking at them. So I can go ahead then and just simply say, well, four take away nothing is four. Now I just have to worry about coming up with equivalent fractions for six ninths and two thirds. And the greatest common multiple for nine and three, just like I did when I was making equivalent fractions for adding mixed numbers is nine. Since nine is the greatest common multiple, it's the greatest the common denominator for these fractions now. Since 9 pretty much multiplied by 1 to get 9, I'll just say 6 times 1 is 6. I know a lot of times people say, well, I didn't do anything to 6 over 9, so I'll just bring it over here. Well, well, essentially, you, you did. You multiplied it by a form of 1. Uh, 9 times 1 is 9. 6 times 1 is 6. Here, 3 times 3 gave us 9. So since I multiplied my denominator by 3, and since I increased it, uh, by multiplying it by 3, I'll have to do the same here. 2 times 3 is 6, and, and sure enough, 6 over 9 is equivalent to 2 thirds because, well, there we proved it. And since 6 ninths take away 6 ninths is 0, I'm done. I'm done. I have seen kids try to do something like this. They'll write 0 over 9. Um, it's not in simplest terms, for one thing. and and, and that fraction bar, it represents the operation of division. So think of it like this, you know, anytime you multiply or divide a number by zero or have zero as a factor or divisor or dividend or whatever, your quotient or your product is always going to be zero. So even this is just not going to do. So I'm not even going to put that there. Since I have to simplify, you can always say, well, four is the simplest term. So I can put a four here. Now, let's say that I had a situation where uh, my top fraction was not equal to or greater than my bottom fraction. I'll show you a little technique there. Let's say that I have a problem such as 3 and 1 third take away 1 and 4 fifths. Well, I, I could do this. I know that 4 fifths, since my numerator is very close uh, to my denominator, is very close to 1. And I know that one third is less than half. So I know this is smaller than, than here. So I can take one of my holes, since I have three holes, I, have, I can make that two and take one of my holes and convert it to a fraction that's equivalent to a hole and, and just say uh, three over three. And then since I have a hole here, I, I know whatever sum I get here is going to be greater than four fifths. And that will work out to be uh, four 
over 3. So I know 4 over 3 will be greater than 4 over 5. So I can go ahead and say 2 take away 1 is 1. Now I just need to come up with uh, like denominators. And I'm going to very quickly work through that without the explanation since I've already explained that once. I always want to just use my LCM for my uh, LCD. And 5 times 3 is 15, so 4 times 3 is 12. 3 times 5 is 15, 4 times 5 is 20. 20 take away 12 is 8 over 15, and that is in simplest terms. So since there wasn't that big of a that big of a uh, problem for me realizing that one third is less than four fifths, it was easy just to take a hole from the three holes I had and make it uh, into a form of one like this and do it that way. So that that was pretty simple. But let's say that. I did not know that. Let's say that I'm relatively new to fractions, not recognize that one third is uh, quite a bit less than four fifths, and I just want to do a quick, simple, surefire way. Well, that quick, simple, surefire way could look a lot like this. I'm going to rewrite my problem here. Three and one third take away one and four fifths. I can convert both this fraction and this fraction into improper fractions. This mixed number, this mixed number, I'm, I'm sorry, into improper fractions. And let's go ahead and do it that way. 3 times 3 is 9. You multiply your denominator and your numerator, and then you add your, I'm sorry, I misspoke. You multiply your denominator by your whole number, then you add your numerator to get your new numerator. So 3 times my 3 holes is 9. And 9 plus 1 is 10 over 3. 5, my denominator, times my 1 whole is 5. Because any time you multiply a number by 1, your uh, product will be the number you start out with. So 5 times 1 is 5, plus 4 is 9. So 9 over 5. And now I just have to make these into um, like denominators. And I'm going to use 15 again. 3 times 5 is 15, so 10 times 5 is 50. 5 times 3 was 15, so 9 times 3 is 27. And 50 take away 27 is, uh, is going to work out to be, well, uh, it's going to work out to be 23 uh, over 15. Now I need to convert this improper fraction, this improper fraction into a mixed number. I know that 15 will go into 23 one whole time. And then I know that 23 subtract 15 is going to give me 8. And then 15 is my denominator again. So my answer was 1 and 8 fifteenths. And here I got that too, 1 and 8 fifteenths. Because I borrowed a whole and then converted it into a form of 1, like with 3 over 3, I had fewer steps and it was a lot simpler process. Because I went ahead and converted these mixed numbers into improper fractions, and then it was might be a little bit difficult for some kids to look at some of these numbers like nine and multiply it by three. Of course, you would think a kid who's doing fraction problems would be a little bit more advanced than that, but there's a lot going on here. I would recommend students do this method, but now I've always thought it does not matter to me what approach a student takes to get at the answer as long as they get the correct answer. If this method works best for you, by all means use it. If this method works best for you, by all means use it. Now, I wanted to keep this video uh, under 15 minutes, so at this point I'm going to stop. And in my uh, next video, I will be demonstrating how to multiply and divide fractions. I hope that uh, this video has given a little bit of clarification for some of you out there who may have been having trouble adding and subtracting mixed numbers. Thank you.